Q&A is going to be um, with Steve Grant, one of the stars of, of the series. This is a web series, so you're going to see a, several episodes of the web series. And um, the creator, Matthew Redmond, is, is going to be with us too. So we're going to learn all the behind the scenes. I love all that stuff. Um, and we're just going to have a lot of fun. You can ask them anything. I want to give you guys plenty of opportunities to ask stuff. So stick around and enjoy the show. So this is Matthew, he, he's the one that created it, but has wore tons of hats. So tell them the creation of everything and then all the different jobs that you did. Um, so I, this started as a short story that I wrote in college to get into a, a college class at the University of Chicago. It was based in Chicago. Uh, I expanded it to be like a novella, which became my thesis, which I think it was the weirdest thesis at the University of Chicago in history. Um, then I expanded it into a novel. So it was published as a novel about 25 years ago, made into a movie 15 years ago, and in the process was switched to Seattle. And then this is 15 years later, so this, this series sequel is now in LA. So I've like been city hopping and um, just following these same characters for ever, it feels like. I don't know what's gonna be next, they're all gonna be, it's gonna be like, Definitely has to become man culture at some point. Oh, right, right, right. we gotta grow up. Okay, well, t uh, talk about um, the cast too, finding Derek and how he's kind of. Uh, well, so when we first were casting, Derek was um, so great in it, you know, in the, in the first movie and won awards for it, and had this kind of a James Dean kind of very um, icy demeanor, which is what the character's like. He, he's literally kind of frozen, or figuratively kind of frozen. Um, and and then Daryl Stevens as his love interest. I think they have such a terrific chemistry, um, and and Daryl has brought so much to the, the, to the project with his own fans from Noah's Ark. He's on he's on Be Positive, which is you know a, a show right now. Uh, and here's Steve Graham. Why don't you come up and yeah? He did. He didn't leave. Yeah. We thought you had like gotten shy. <laughs> So let's talk about um, branding while we're here. So um, branding, yes. Yeah, so branding and branding. Um, so um, tell me, uh, as, as far as that, what's the what's the greatest thing that someone sent you for free? Being a <laughs> honestly, I, I, I got to be honest. I usually don't really like getting gifts. Um, but I, I wish I could think of, of, of something. I know, oh, I got a corgi blanket recently. I'm, I'm obsessed with corgis. And someone sent me this, like, I just like that stuff that's like really this like sweet and thoughtful and like goofy, like, yeah. stuff like that, yeah. I know those corgis are hard to control. That's what I've heard. Um, okay, so um, this tackles a lot of topics, right? I mean, there's a lot of really important things, but you know, through there and I work, um, in HIV prevention myself at a health center, I did that this morning, and I, I think it was so important some of the conversations they had, or whatever he's counseling the younger person. I mean, there's so many important things. Uh, how was coming up with some of the ideas, and then also what's something you'd like to tackle in another season? Well, I mean, we we definitely wanted it to be very topical, and we like the idea of it covering things that people should be talking about and they don't always talk about, or at least they don't always portray it. People are having these conversations, they're just not always portrayed. Um, so what we did was about, oh God, it was probably six or seven years ago when Alan and I thought of you know doing the sequel, we sat down and we decided instead of doing each episode as a confession, we do each episode as a client. And that just kind of naturally evolved into you know each client with a story worth telling would be, would have some sort of a, an issue or a request. None of these things are far-fetched. These have all happened to people that we know, or to us, or to people that were kind of giving us ideas for the series. And, and they're definitely things that an, a sex worker would have encountered, probably all of them in some form. Um, so there's, I think there's a lot, of, a lot more realism in the series than there probably was in the novel, which I was writing as a young boy who didn't know anything and sort of had a you know, fantastic view of what sex work was really all about. Um, but yeah, I, I think it ends up being very, I think it ends up being very topical. And, and I, what I love about Steve's episode is, um, it's, it's, was this the first time you had acted or did you act something just before this? I've done something just before that I did Falling for Angels. Okay, so, but it was, it was an early acting experience. But what I loved is that um, you bring so much of yourself into it, 
but there's also things that are not you. And so only people who know you know what is and what isn't you. Right. Right. But I thought you were so, I just wanted to, you know, take a moment and say I thought you were so great in this. And I'm so oh. glad that we pulled you into it because you were just, I think you were so touching. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, it's funny, you have such great laughs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was, you have a good sense of humor about it. I found that some of the stuff, like the stuff that hit, like, some of the stuff hit too close to home. <laughs> um, you know, doing like just being a, a person that has a presence on social media. Um, and I, but I also found like those, you know, of course it's me, so I'm like super critical. I'm like, oh, sometimes, you know, like you see yourself. Um, but it was like the lines I delivered that I felt like are from my own, like, some of the lines I delivered I felt like could have been from my own life. So I felt like those were the, that felt a lot more natural to me. Yeah, great job. Uh, so, when is this Comic Con coming to Chicago? Because I need to go. <laughs> uh, they're they're more common than you think. Yeah. They're definitely out there. Yeah. Uh, and I've I've actually I write on my blog a lot about going to similar shows. Like I go to these celebrity autograph shows. I started going to them kind of as a lark, thinking that I was sort of doing some sociological experiment. But then I became a part of them. And of course, I was I was spending the money and standing the lines and, and actually enjoying them. But yeah. Those shows are, are definitely very real, and cosplay is huge. Yeah, and even with the clubs and everything, they're, yeah. Uh, and they've gotten gayer over the years, I've noticed. Um, everything has. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so are you in Chicago now? Yeah. OK, so. Always. I mean, yeah. 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 Well, of course, I was the last person to come into the theater, but I was I lived like two miles away. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> don't tell, tell people where you live, Steve. Just don't know that. You know, people hiding in the bushes. Um, so, Talk about your next projects. What else are you guys working on? And oh yeah, well, so we're we're on the film festival circuit with this, and you know our plan is to get as much attention and views and things to get interest from a streamer like a Netflix or something like that. So that's the plan. We've been working on this for a while, so we're really getting close to that. Something's going to happen soon. Uh, word of mouth would help. Um, and I've, I'm just moving on. I've written a screenplay, which is completely <coughs> different from this. Um, this was the first screenwriting credit I have. I didn't write the first uh, movie that was adapted by two other people, um, Alan and one of the producers. So it was great. I loved doing it. It was really fun. Um, and I hope to do more screenwriting. Yeah, it was very clever. A lot of yeah. funny, funny things. You guys did so awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. What are you doing? I saw you on Market Days and you just killed it. Everybody loved you. What, what's, what do you do next? Um, yeah, well, of course, I, I have a music career but I haven't really performed nearly as much since the pandemic. I really, I started a, uh, like a, a clothing company, you know, mostly men's underwear and swimwear. So that's really been taking more and more of my time, more than I ever thought it was. So that's really kind of what's keeping me occupied and what's kept me occupied through most of the pandemic. But as far as like more performances and music, um, I'm, I'm not, I don't have like a set release date or anything. But if anyone wants to give me a call for any more acting gigs, I was like, I'll, I'll do more of that. That was, that was really fun. Yeah. Well, that'll, that'll be called. Uh, so it's so crazy to think of like a year ago, I was doing Q and A's like virtual at my home, and this is so nice to just be around people and and you know, get to do a screening and have you guys here. So that just it's just such a great experience. Do people have questions? Does anyone want to ask anything? We have. But why do we see the rest of it? Well, it doesn't exist yet. So if, if this goes to the next level, then you'll see another season. And um, I think there's an endless variety of topics that could be covered. What about Madonna? Tell us about Madonna. Yes, and tell us about Madonna. <laughs> well, please stop. Yeah, yeah, I'll look in the room. Um, what, about, what about Madonna? Just tell us a secret. I don't know. He's what asking about. me this because I, I've written books about Madonna. Um, which has nothing to do with gay culture at all. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll just tell you that I was at her party last night in New York. What? <laughs> um, that was crazy, and you know, a lot of fun, and she was mingling with the people. And I, just a, one little tip that I'll say is, you know, she has this very off-putting kind of demeanor. Like she, she comes in with this "fuck you" tiara, literally, "fuck yeah. you," and she's like, you know, gives the finger. She's very punk rock. But she was so personable and approachable and in such a great humor. And she did an hour long Q&A with celebrity. I mean, they had celebrity projections. They had submitted questions. And they asked her crazy shit that you would never ask her. Like Seth Rogen you know, said, when did you realize you were making a masterpiece when you were filming Body of Evidence? And she answered the question <laughs> like it didn't get pissed off. So that was a lot of fun. So that's my, that's my Madonna tidbit. 
Wow, that, that's good. I'm surprised she did that. I know. One of my friends just interviewed her for uh, MTV, and she, he only got a minute with her, so that's very generous of the queen. Um, okay, anyone else? Any questions? Anything that meant a lot to you throughout the series? Like oh. where, where do you get the inspiration for some of the themes of the episodes? This is my um, college roommate asking questions, <laughs> so it's kind of loaded. <laughs> but um, where did I get the inspiration? It really depends because, like the novel, like the novel, it has a lot of things that are from my life that are that are me. But most of the stuff that's real, that's from me, that from my personal experience, is more of the stuff that fleshes out the person as a, as opposed to like the actual sexual things. Certainly, in the novel, that was the case. In this, you know, some of this stuff happened. And it just translates well to the screen. Not everything that happens translates well, but uh, some things do. And I, I loved watching this and getting your reactions. I really appreciate the reactions, seeing which things are working, which things are funny to you, and nervous laughter and laughter, laughter. Very much appreciated. Great. Um, it was. Uh, <clears throat> it was really. There's some great parts. So I wanted to say i was wondering if the casting for the guy that was um hiv positive presented was is he actually hiv positive was that important that he was cast you know i actually don't know that i i don't know the answer to that but w when you mentioned casting one thing i did want to point out because i think it's so remarkable and it was in the back of our mind but it wasn't something that we made a requirement except for one person every single person who speaks in the series who has any kind of a speaking role is queer so we really did our best, you know, to have queer representation and queer actors. I know not everybody thinks you have to be gay to play gay, and I understand that argument too, but I think it's nice when, when it happens, and it just so happens to be the best person for the job. Okay, so let's talk nudity. Um, <laughs> did you have to wear the sock? You know, because there's the sock that people wear when they're naked. Did you wear the sock? I, I feel like, I know it in something else, I've, I've been like handed that, but I feel like, I know that usually I'm like, I don't really care. Like, it's usually too much to fumble with. And so, I'm, unless, do you remember when that happened? I, I mean, yes. you, guys, you insist that I do it? Because I think I was like tired of it. And you forced I, him to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I, the way I remember, I don't think you had a sock only because you just didn't want to bother with it. And yeah. you were facing a wall. Yeah, I was already like, getting out of the bed, so. Yeah, I mean, but it, it was, it, it is interesting doing these sexual kind of scenes, like you always read about like people having coaches on hand and telling people how to behave. We, you know, we were small budget, we didn't have coaches, we just had to treat people with respect. Um, and, and it worked, I think it, it was, it was, but it was a learning experience to be around. You had like a closed set and stuff. Um, the N-word episode, which got very intense, that was closed, you know, so no one was, you know, peeking, seeing stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't see anybody naked, not from the front. Um, where can people go in the future to watch this? Is this going to be sold already? Well, well, when it is sold, which we hope it will be placed in, in some way sold uh, to some big streamer, um, I think the easiest way is just to go to boyculture.com or to go to Twitter, uh, Twitter, which is also Boy Culture, uh, and I'll keep people updated. But we're hoping it will be this year. This, is, this seems to be a good year for it. And then where can I get that t-shirt with the uh, heart? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I You guys made that, and I like still crack up every time I see that now. Um, no, I never, that wasn't like something. I do have t-shirts that people can buy with my face on it, but nothing that like amazing. <laughs> yours are a lot better. Mine are much more yours, boring. Yours are a little better put together than that one, but that one was kind of for comedic effect. Yeah, yeah. I also thought that girl was really funny. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, thank you guys so much uh, for being here and being present and getting to see everyone's reactions. It was so much fun to see with an audience, and thanks everyone for coming. Thank and you. Let's just keep promoting it, tell your friends, yes. and go to everyone's website up here, and social media, and brands, and all that, so we're all going to support them and everything. So thanks so much, guys. Thank you. 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 Th